In unit two, we're going to be studying the concept of fair division or the mathematics of sharing. And when we talk about fair division, it's important to recognize that what we're trying to do is to divide something, whether it be an object, um, a, a tract of land, an estate. We're dividing something amongst a number of people. It could be two or a number of institutions. And we're trying to get a fair share for each of those institutions or people. And it's important to note that the fair share for each individual player is not necessarily going to be the same. So the fair share in my eyes might be different than a fair share in your eyes. So that's something important to keep in mind as we work through the fair division methods. So the dilemma that we have is how can something that must be shared by a set of competing parties be divided in a way that ensures that each party receives a fair share? So it could be that we're dividing a bag of candy, we could be dividing an estate, um, but basically we're trying to take that property and divide it so that each party receives a fair share. Before we get started talking about the ways that we're going to be able to do that, let's look at some definitions that we're going to need. The first one is assets, which can also be called goods or booty. That's simply the item or items being divided. We have tangible assets, which are physical objects like candy or um, a pizza or a cake. We also have intangible assets like rights or developments. We have discreetly divisible goods. That would be goods that um, are going to be divided, but they cannot be separated into pieces. So something like a representative. So you can't take a representative and cut them in half because they're a person. So that representative goes to one group or another, but it can't be split. We also have continuously divisible goods, which are single items that can be divided, things like cakes or land borders. The players are simply the parties with the right to share the goods. It's oftentimes an individual, but it can also be an institution like a group, a political party, or a nation. We have a value system where each player can quantify the value of the goods. In other words, they can assign either an absolute value, a dollar amount, or a relative value, a percentage of the total, to the assets that we're trying to divide. And then a fair division method is going to be a non-ambiguous, so a specific set of rules for dividing assets in a finite number of moves. Some assumptions that we're going to make as we work through our fair division methods, we're going to assume that the players have no knowledge of what the other players like, and there is no communication between the players. So an example there would be um, if you had a brother and sister who were sharing a cake, typically the brother and sister are going to know what each other likes, and in that case, the privacy assumption would be violated because they're going to have knowledge of each other's likes. The second assumption we're going to make is rationality, and that is assuming that the parties are going to act logically and in their best interest. So going back to our example of the brother and sister, if I am more concerned about you not getting a good share or a fair share than I am about me getting a fair share, then that's going to be a violation of the rationality assumption because I'm not working in my best interest. I'm working to try to make your life as miserable as possible. The third assumption is the cooperation assumption, and that assumes that the players are willing participants and they will accept the outcome of the game without outside arbitration or intervention. So cooperation assumes that I am not going to go behind our method of division and sue you because I'm not happy with the share that I received. And then the last assumption we'll make is symmetry, and that's that players have equal rights in sharing the assets. So an example of where that might be violated is if um, the brother and sister are splitting their parents' estate, 
but the brother cared for the parents in their later years, so the brother is entitled to more of this estate than the sister is. That would be a violation of the symmetry assumption. When we talk about a fair share, what we're basically talking about is that each party, where there are n parties, receives one nth of the total value in their own eyes. So it's important to recognize that the one nth of the total value in my eyes is not necessarily the same as one nth of the total value in your eyes. So an example there would be if we're sharing a pizza and I place a $10 value on the pizza, well, then I'm entitled to one half of $10. You, on the other hand, if you place a value of $20 on that pizza, then you're entitled to one half of $20 or a $10 share. So it's important to recognize that because parties value the assets differently, the fair share for each party is also going to be different. In a fair division, each party receives their fair share based on their value system. It's important to note, however, that a fair division does not guarantee the best possible division. It just guarantees that each party is going to receive their fair share. And note that the fair division assumptions must be met in order for a fair division to occur. The fair division methods that we will discuss guarantee a proportional fair share, so a value of at least one nth of the total value in the player's eyes. So let's look at an example where we are trying to divide a pizza. So suppose four classmates are splitting equally a $12 pizza that is half pepperoni and half veggie that someone else bought them. What is each person's fair share? Well, in this case, we're told the value of the pizza is $12, and we're told that we have four classmates. And we know that a pizza is a continuously divided good. So in other words, we can cut it up into pieces. And since they are splitting it equally, each person's fair share is going to be the same dollar amount in this case because they're each entitled to one nth or one fourth of the total value of the pizza. In this case, the value of the pizza is $12.00. So they're each entitled to one-fourth of $12 or a $3 share. Another way of looking at it is because they're entitled to one-fourth of the entire pizza. Well, the entire pizza represents 100%, so they are entitled to 25% of the whole pizza. So the question is, what is a $3 share to each of the players, and that's where the way that they value the different types of pizza is going to come into play. So suppose that Steve likes pepperoni twice as much as veggie. Describe a fair share for Steve. So remember, everybody's fair share is a $3 value, but what we have to figure out is how much of this pizza is representative of $3. And because Steve likes pepperoni twice as much as veggie, it's not going to take as much pepperoni pizza for us to reach a $3 amount as it would for us to reach a $3 amount on the veggie side, at least in Steve's eyes. So because Steve values the pepperoni twice as much as the veggie, if he values the veggie at $4, then he would value the pepperoni twice as much or at $8. So the way that we determine this is we let the veggie half be X, and then we know that if the veggie value is X and he likes pepperoni twice as much, then the pepperoni is going to be twice X or 2X. We also know that the total value of the pizza is going to be $12, 
So if we take the value of the pepperoni half, 2x, and add it to the value of the veggie half, x, that's going to give us the total value of the pizza, or $12. So by solving this for x, we get that x is $4, and 2x would be twice that much, or $8. Remember that x represented the value of the veggie half. That's how we know the veggie half is worth $4. And 2x represents the value of the pepperoni half, so the pepperoni half is worth $8. But remember, this is only in Steve's eyes. If we look at one of the other players, then we're going to have to find a different value system unless they also value pepperoni twice as much as veggie. So if the pizza was divided into eight pieces, four of each kind, then Steve would value a slice of pepperoni worth $2 because if the whole pepperoni half is worth $8 and we split that into four slices, then each slice would be worth one-fourth of the $8 or $2. And a slice of veggie would be worth $1 because the veggie half, we said the whole half is worth $4. So if we divide that into four equal slices, then each slice would be worth one-fourth of that, or one dollar. So a fair share for Steve could be one slice of pepperoni, which is worth two dollars, and one slice of veggie, which is worth a dollar, because remember, each player has a fair share of three dollars. So other fair shares for Steve with the pizza cut into eight pieces would be one pepperoni and one veggie. We already talked about that. $2 plus $1 would be $3. One and a half slices of pepperoni. So each pepperoni slice is worth $2. If he had one and a half of those, that would still be a $3 value. Three slices of veggie. Since the veggie pizza is at $1 each, three times that would still give us our fair share of $3 and then a half pepperoni and two veggies. So each veggie slice is worth a dollar, so that would give us two dollars, and then half of a pepperoni would be worth one dollar, so that would still give us our three dollars. So all of these would be a fair share according to Steve's values. So the question becomes, well, we know what Steve values, but what about everybody else? How do we make a fair division? And that's where we have to find a way to divide the pizza so that all of the players receive a fair share. So let's look at another player. Suppose Kim is a vegetarian and thus won't eat pepperoni. Describe a fair share for Kim. Remember, her fair share is still a $3 value, we just have to figure out what does she value at $3. Well, because she won't eat the pepperoni side, it has absolutely no value to her whatsoever. So all of the value of the pizza, which remember was worth $12, all of that value is going to fall into the veggie half in Kim's eyes. So if the pizza is cut into eight slices with four in each half, a pepperoni slice is going to be worth nothing because she has no value there because she won't eat it. But a veggie slice would have the total value of the veggie half, which we said was $12, divided by the number of slices, four. So each veggie slice is worth $3. So in Kim's eyes, the only way to give her a fair share is to give her one slice of veggie and then you can give her however much pepperoni you want, because remember, the pepperoni has no value to her whatsoever. As long as she gets a slice of veggie, then she can get however much pepperoni as she wants, and she will still get a fair share. Now, keep in mind that we found the fair share for two players. Remember that we had a total of four players involved. So if we wanted to find an actual fair division, we would have to find the fair shares for each of the players and then find a way to be able to divide the pizza up so that each player did in fact get their fair share.